Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL Part 7, Rendering in the Application. So, in the last couple of videos, you've learned how to write some very simple shaders, which will render a yellow point in the center of the screen, and you learned the OpenGL functions you'll need to compile those. In this video, we're going to bring all that information together and create a new application which is going to use those shaders and render that point so we can see a yellow point on the screen. So before we do that there's a few more OpenGL functions that you're going to need. Uh, these aren't too difficult. The first one, GL use program, will tell OpenGL to use the program referenced by the parameter program ref it should use that when it's rendering an image. To actually start the rendering process, we use uh, an OpenGL function called GLDrawArrays. Now what this function is in charge of doing is rendering the geometric primitives. And a geometric primitive could refer to either points or lines or triangles depending on the context. But it will use the program specified by GL use program and it will render one of these types of objects and that's specified by the parameter draw mode. In this first application we're just going to render points. Uh, but draw mode is specified again using an OpenGL constant like GL underscore points. And as you'll learn later on too there's, for some of the more advanced drawings, like lines and triangles, there's lots of different ways you can group the points to create lines or triangles, either continuously or separately. And we'll learn more about draw modes in the future. But uh, in addition, this usually uses the data from arrays, which are stored in vertex buffers. Now for this first program, we're kind of sidestepping the whole use of vertex buffers because we're just rendering that one constant position, that one point. But in general, for every other vertex program we write after this, we're going to need to use vertex buffers to store more than one point. And that's usually stored as an array. And the other parameters here, first index and index count, tell us how much data is in that array and where to start. So first index will usually start at zero. And it's possible to pack lots of different types of data into one of these arrays, but we'll basically always start at zero. And then you need to tell OpenGL how many points you're rendering from that array. All right, so that's just the total number of points. And for a first application, it's just going to be one. And finally, kind of an aesthetic consideration, uh, if I was to render a single point, uh, by default that would render as a single pixel, and you would probably not be able to see that in this video. So you can actually specify the points be rendered using multiple pixels, like a little rectangle that's a certain size. So we'll also change the default point size from one pixel per point to many more pixels, just so we can see it. All right, so we're going to use those three functions. And without further ado, we're going to head over to our development environment. As usual, I like to use Sublime Text. And we're going to create a new application. Uh, so this will be the second application we've created. Uh, the first application just created kind of a basic window on the screen using the Pygame library. And you might recall that all the core code we need to create a window, that's in a class called Base and we extend that class to create each of our applications. And we're going to be doing the same thing here. All right. Also, I'd like to put uh, all the applications in the root folder. So for me, that's a directory called Python Graphics. Again, the applications don't go in the core folder. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and make a new file. And I'm going to save this. I think this is video seven. So we'll save this as See, I'll call it test-07.py. All right. Uh, first, we need our import statements. We've written a lot of good code, so we're going to go ahead and use that code here. And right, so first, uh, let's see. 
from the core directory, the base file, I need to import the base class. Be careful it doesn't autocorrect to the wrong capitalization. Uh, next, from core.openglutils, I want to import the class, the capital O, openglutils. Need to keep undoing that capitalization. And finally, I need access to some stuff from the OpenGL package. So from OpenGL, we're going to go ahead and import GL. Okay. And this application, again, uh, we're just going to render a single point. And so to begin, we're going to create a class. I usually call all my classes test. And again, this extends the base class. Again, it's kind of review, but in the base class, there's two functions which are not defined that we need to fill in. One of them is called initialize, that's run once at the beginning of a program. And there's something called the update function, which is run 60 times per second. So I need to define each one of those functions. I'm going to define initialize. That's an instance-based function, so I need the self parameter there. Uh, first, I like to open up the console and say, uh, let's just print uh, initializing program. And just see those words to know that something's happening. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and actually you know, create the GPU program. Okay, first, uh, we want to write the vertex shader code. And one of the many things I love about Python is the ability to create multi-line strings. In any other programming language, we'd have to like do some fancy work with like adding strings together or using some kind of a join method. But here, I can just create my vertex shader code. I'll create that in a variable called VS code. I'm going to use triple quotations. Right, that's a syntax for multi-line string, string which spans multiple lines. Uh, again, I'm just going to use that same code we saw in an earlier video, right? The, the simplest possible shader, which assigns values to GL position. Right? In this case, I want it to be in the center of the screen. Don't forget, uh, when you're programming in GLSL, each line has to end with a semicolon, unlike Python. And then triple quotes to close my multi-line string. There you go, world's simplest vertex shader. And next, uh, let's create the fragment shader code. I'll call this FS code. Again, triple quotes because this is a multi-line string. Avoid main. And here, I'm going to assign GL frag color be a VEC4. I'd like to be yellow for contrast. All right. World's simplest shader programs. Okay. Next, we actually need to send that code to the GPU and compile it. So send code to GPU, compile, and we also want to store the program reference. Because later on we want to use GL use program. We need that reference. We need to save it so we can tell the software which GPU program to use. And so since I'm going to use that later on in the update method, I want to store the program reference as kind of a class level variable. So that's why I'm creating this self dot program ref. It's a scope issue. I want this to have class level scope. So OpenGL utils. Remember, uh, we wrote a method called initialize program. And for that to work, we have to pass it the vertex shader code and the fragment shader code. All right. So that should send the code to the GPU and compile it. And we can also uh, change render settings as well. Right, these are the purely 
aesthetic conditions. And so I would like to set the point size so that you can see it. Uh, maybe I'll make it 16 pixels long. All right, so that's all the setup code that goes in initialize. Uh, next, I want to define the update function. Uh, so let's def update self and really two tasks to do here. Uh, first, we're going to select the program to use when rendering. And we'll do that with gl use program uh, self dot program ref. And then to actually activate the rendering process, right, to render those geometric objects using the selected program, uh, we do that with the GL draw arrays. It's plural. So first, I need a constant which specifies the draw mode. And for this, I'm using the constant GL. Uh, gl underscore points. Next, uh, what's the index of the first? Uh, zero. I'm always going to start at zero, and there's really only one point to render. Again, I I'm sidestepping buffers entirely. And then, that's it. That's the update function, and that'll be repeated 60 times a second. And as always with these applications, uh, then we have to create an instance. Right? Uh, so we need to create instance of the class and run it and so test dot run all right it's the moment of truth so i'm going to go ahead and save my code and go up to let's see I want to build this there we go tools build or control d you should see a couple of things happen Right, first, we get our little hello from the Pi Game community. Oh, something happened. Let's see. Uh, GL. Oh, capitalization error. So I'll go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's see. I need to go over to. I bet a lot of you caught this. Um, let's see. It's GL, and there's a lowercase l with a link program. Yep, right here. Capitalization. All right, let's go ahead and save that and head back to the test program. Uh, Control B to try running that again. Hopefully, I get everything right this time. Fantastic, we got our little message at the bottom initializing program, but more importantly, we're actually using the GPU to render something. Now, there's a saying the longest journey begins with a single step. Uh, the most beautiful graphics begin with a single point. And that's what we have right here. So we've got our graphics window, and right at the center, we have our point. So that's looking really great. At this point, uh, I'm going to encourage you to do some experimentation with this. Right? So for instance, if you go up to the shader code, why don't you try changing some of these values and see what happens. Right? You can try to get different colors right here. And so maybe you'll get like a red or a green or a cyan or a white. What happens if you set the alpha to zero? Hmm, that could be worth checking out. And also try changing the values of GL position as well, just to get a sense of the window bounds. So it's kind of a spoiler. Um, we have the x-axis, which goes from left to right. That goes from negative one on one side to positive one on the other side. Uh, the y value goes from negative 1 to positive 1, and the z value goes from negative 1 to positive 1. So if any of these coordinates are outside that range, the point will not render. But go ahead and try uh, experimenting and see what happens. Another good thing to do to experiment with is to actually introduce errors to see how the error reporting works as well. Like for example, what would happen if we forgot a semicolon? Right? This happens sometimes. Uh, and we did a lot of work to create that error reporting. We might as well see how it pays off here. So saving and building this again. Right, And so here we go. And let me make this a little bit larger. And so here, uh, an exception is raised with the error message. 
right? And this is printing the contents of the shader logs now. Right? In particular, sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure out, but here it's saying uh, once it got to this closing brace, there was some kind of a syntax error here. It's not really the problem with the brace, but something was expected right before the brace. So this will give you an idea of kind of where to look around in the program. And the 8 here is the line number, and that might be a little bit confusing because you might say, well, that's at line number 4. But remember, when we actually compiled the shader, we added a few more extra lines of code kind of prefacing this to specify a specific version of OpenGL. But again, if there's some kind of an error, it'll print out that message. Otherwise, uh, OpenGL would fail silently. So error checking is important. And it's, it's really nice to just kind of experiment and see what happens. You can get used to the error messages. At first, our programs will be so simple that we probably won't have too many errors. But what if, for instance, you tried to create a VEC3, but you put four numbers in it? Let's save and go ahead and build that project. And again, uh, here the error, uh, the constructor, there's too many arguments. And sure enough, a vector 3 should not have four arguments in it. All right, so again, go ahead and experiment with this. Uh, make changes to see if you can make the point look a little bit different. You can change the location, the color. You can even change the size of the, pro of the point. I remember that's with the code GL point size. And... Congratulations on drawing your very first point.